What are your thoughts on uh, priorities, uh, opportunities that exist um, in terms of addressing infrastructure ga gaps in Detroit? Great, well I guess I already said what I used to do, so that's not a secret. Um, I spent a lot of time, um, I came from the U.S. Department of Energy to Detroit on behalf of Secretary Moniz and then the pres former president, former vice president, um, to at the request of the city and through a program that we're running to take a look at infrastructure wide. So I worked on the LED streetlight conversion, the, the urban solar park at O'Shea Park, and I was just getting into mobility when we all got, um, we finished our job. So um, looking at Detroit today, um, for me the frame I have is about honestly site selection and competitiveness for this city and this region. So I don't take any of the individual infrastructure problems alone. They're, they're all connected. Energy, water, um, transportation systems, accessibility, they're all interrelated and, and the built environment. We have a lot of challenges. Finance is certainly one of them. There are regulatory and policy roadblocks to residential upgrades, for example, um, that we need to overcome. But for me, I look at it from a, a lens of you know climate impacts. This country faces billion dollar disasters every year. That's not going to stop. So how does Detroit position itself, indeed leapfrog into the state of the art Using the great minds that we have in this room and at our universities, the strength of the URC is something that should not be taken lightly, but it's not sufficient. We need to bring in other regional partners, our national laboratories, for example. And then, frankly, this is an opportunity to create a virtuous cycle. I talk about competitiveness. You want your alumni to come back and live and work and play in uh, these communities. I did that. I chose to come back, but not everyone does. Um, so. Uh, I would just ask that, that this brain trust continue to grow, um, that this table that Brittany is, and the team has put together um, be steadfast and continue, because that's frankly how we did the work. When I was in service, we created a table, brought every relevant agency to the table over six and a half years. I'm very proud of the work we did, but it's uh, persistent, painful, and you have to bring new partners to the table. Sorry, I, I will give the mic back now. <laughs> Thank you. I like that virtuous cycle. Um, uh, it, possibly another perspective to add to this uh, would be you, Joe. Um, so Detroit has different, has barriers to access in ways that might be different than other parts of Michigan. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about, or tell us about the Michigan Moonshot project that uh, Merit Network has been working on um, with other partners? Um, I understand that it was unveiled at the Mackinac Policy Conference yes, um, yep. recently. So, uh, yeah, if you could tell us about the Moonshot Project and how it could help address some of the barriers in this city. Sure. Well, I'd like Thanks. to say it's great to be back at Wayne State, my old campus. Worked here for the better part of a decade and uh, still love the place. I have a lot of friends here, too, so thanks for the kind invitation. Uh, yeah, we were uh, really lucky to host a panel at the Mackinac Policy Conference. Uh, it was all about uh, broadband, whether it was rural or urban, and the digital divide that exists both in uh, you know those areas urban and rural and uh, we were very honored to have Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist as a panelist uh, on the panel uh, he didn't seem to mind that the name of our panel was fix the damn internet for students uh, he he let us have that one which was very kind to him so that was uh, pretty cool we also had the uh, CEO of Rocket Fiber uh, uh, co-founder as well Mark Hudson was on the panel and my friend and colleague Dr. Johannes Bauer who's in the audience and I hope we have a chance to hear him speak in a moment too about this collaboration we have going so uh, it was a great panel it was widely viewed a lot of social media activity um, and for those of you who don't know Merit, uh, Merit is one of the artifacts of research collaboration between the URC schools, maybe one of the oldest ones and uh, most prevalent as well. So we are the nonprofit telecommunications organization that runs a 4,000 mile fiber optic network connecting all the public universities, supporting researchers and students and, and uh, staff uh, in, in their endeavors. Um, and uh, it's a very constructive uh, collaboration. So that theme of collaboration kind of comes back in here. Uh, because of the position I hold and because of Merritt's expansive network, we were uh, privileged to participate in uh, Governor Snyder's broadband uh, uh, task force. And uh, my eyes were really open through that work about the challenges that are seen both in urban and rural areas. Uh, that report actually unveiled that 27% of students in Michigan do not have access to what the FCC classifies as the most rudimentary broadband internet access. And uh, it's a tragedy. Uh, so. Merit has steeled itself to actually launch this program called the Michigan Moonshot, which I describe as a, a comprehensive solutions framework that uh, will help communities and citizens understand the extent of their problems, 
to really uh, importantly measure broadband access in the state. And this is an issue that is, uh, if you're in this area, you hear a lot about it. In fact, our own uh, governor, or I'm sorry, Senator uh, uh, Gary Peters last week uh, is supporting legislation called the Broadband Data Act that is all about mapping broadband data better. And the reason I mention this is because there is money for broadband. The feds uh, release tens of billions of dollars to support broadband infrastructure build outs, yet they don't know where to go because the data uh, mapping process they have is so fatally flawed. Mm -hmm. This is a huge national conversation. So this is an area where there is money, they just don't know where and how to spend it best. So it's really interesting. Um, you asked me about the differences in uh, rural and urban areas, and, and I'd like uh, Dr. Bauer, you know, when he gets a moment to talk about the study they did called uh, uh, Broadband to the Neighborhood, uh, the Digital Divide in Detroit. And uh, the difference in Detroit is that it's really about affordability. So affordability is driving choice, uh, driving citizens to make choices between ISP services that are very robust to their homes or using their phone as a mobile network, mobile network device. And that's why the problem exists in Detroit. It's really about affordability. In the rural areas, it's really about infrastructure. It's expensive, it takes a long time to build, wired or wireless, and there's a lack of it. So, uh, but both those situations evidence themselves the same way. Uh, I have traveled all around the state and I have seen families outside of libraries on cold snowy nights in Michigan in their cars using free Wi-Fi at seven o'clock so they can complete their homework. This is uh, something that should not stand. And in Detroit, you know, families are, you know, bringing their students to McDonald's to uh, complete their homework. And this is holding people back from their full potential. So that's why we've launched the program. Okay. Great, Brittany. <clears throat> so, Joe, can you just for everyone, and we can post it up on our website, can you tell where people can learn more about the moonshot? Sure, if you go to uh, merit.edu, yes, we are a .edu. We actually uh, managed, I think, that domain for a, for a while nationally because we were so early on in uh, uh, the technology uh, ecosystem nationally. Uh, if you go to our website and search for Moonshot, or I think you can go to merit.edu slash moonshot, and there's a lot of information about it. And I will say Merit is launching Michigan's first broadband uh, summit uh, in September where we're trying to get communities and stakeholders and providers together to collaborate and share information, so I'll do a little plug there as well. Okay. Joe, you mentioned the uh, government funding, I think, that's for broadband. It's how are they making decisions right now on where to direct those funds, and what data sources are they relying on? That's a great question, and that is actually the crux of the issue. So uh, a couple times a year, all telecommunication providers fill out this thing called the 477 form, the FCC 477 form. If you live in my world, you know all about this. And uh, telcos self-report whether they serve residents in these areas. And these are large areas, tens of square miles sometimes. And if they serve one resident or plan to serve one resident, they check a box and no federal funding can uh, come into these areas. Well, you full well know that if your neighbor on one street, uh, half a county over has broadband, you may not have it because providers may not have built there. Yet this is the process that is driving our funding. And I'm so thankful Senator Peters is really pushing for better ways to map. If I can leave you with one thing, mapping equals money in the broadband world. So, Peter, do you want to give us yeah. one more thought about this? And yeah, just on? one more thought about this. I don't know whether you're aware of what uh, San Francisco has done the last uh, year, year and a half, essentially taking back broadband from market players and bringing it into the public realm by bond financing it such that there is more broader access to uh, to, and that's in San Francisco, <laughs> uh, more broad access to, uh, to broadband, uh, uh, even in the communities outside of the city. That's great. And just one thing, I don't want to go too deep on broadband because we have a lot of really important issues to discuss. Uh, Dr. Bauer at MSU has launched a very novel citizen science crowdsource-based broadband data measurement experiment. He launched it this year, uh, just in the last couple months, with 7,000 students in Michigan and rural areas. And in this way, we're trying to map from the citizen's perspective not from the provider perspective. I really want him to talk about this later when he gets a chance. Yeah, great. Uh, we are planning to uh, hear from Dr. Bauer after our panel. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Great.